started this month strong by your goodness, Lord. Father, we exalt your name that even in this time, you have been good to us, O oh God. We ask that you will be exalted above all other names in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we bring your word to you, O oh God. We ask that you speak to us, Lord. And we ask that you empower me as I speak your word. That your word will be sent forth to the ears of your people, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we glorify you and we exalt your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. How is everyone doing this afternoon? Uh, we're grateful to God that uh, we've made it to the 10th month of the year, October. And uh, today being the fourth, uh, the first Sunday of the month, uh, we're grateful uh, that we're seeing this month and uh, I'm grateful to be blessed to see this month, uh, which is my birth month. Uh, this past Thursday was my birthday. And uh, I give him glory uh, because uh, not only that I celebrated my birthday, uh, our beloved country, Nigeria, celebrated 60 years of its independence. Amen? Amen? And 60 years is not 60 days. You know, Nigeria is now is in its diamond age right now. So that number 60 is very significant. Uh, so we're grateful that uh, God is still sustaining Nigeria and we continue to keep that country in our prayers. Amen? Amen. And uh, I, I know I didn't do much uh, for my birthday, uh, but I did you know, what, what is called a Q&A session live stream uh, where I'll just be answering people's questions. And uh, I've, I've gotten a, a, a few questions from, uh, from people that watched or tuned in to the streaming. And uh, uh, one actually, one good question uh, someone asked is, what do I hope to accomplish uh, at 28? And I just told her everything that I will accomplish uh, just by His grace. Amen? Amen. The title that I'll be speaking on, the title of the sermon today that I'll be speaking on is the empathetic vineyard of God. The empathetic vineyard, uh, which is another word for empathy. Uh, and uh, as I was preparing the sermon, uh, I came across uh, the, the news that we have all heard uh, about the president. Donald Trump and the first lady, his wife, uh, that were already contracted with the coronavirus. They were tested positive of COVID-19. And I looked at I looked at the post and I was asking these questions: Is this a joke? Like, is is this even true that the president? After, you know, being in this debate with Joe Biden, later got tested positive for the virus. And others were saying, oh, it's true. Uh, this is that. And a lot of people were making these jokes. And another question came to me. If the president... You know, the president was at this debate. I know that he was at least six feet away from Joe Biden as they were speaking. And now later on, he becomes a victim of this virus. And now everyone is, is uh, making jokes like, oh, he got this virus, yes, this, this, that. But... They didn't think to themselves, 
do you have any empathy over this, over this situation? Yes, he has done many things wrong while he has been the president. But do we think to ourselves, do we have empathy over someone who has, did, who has done us wrong? Amen? Amen? So that's where the title, The Empathetic Vineyard, will come in. And I looked at the Hebrew word for empathy, which also means compassion. Do you have compassion for someone who has done you wrong? I heard this saying that says, your worst enemy could be your best friend. That is a true statement. So when, so with this vineyard of God that is full of empathy, whoever has done us wrong will go through this stage of this empathetic vineyard and, that, and at the end they will receive a an everlasting life. Praise God. Amen. Let's go to the first reading that we read. Isaiah chapter 5. I'm going to read from verses 1 to 4. And these are the key points that, that I'll be speaking on. The first one is the vineyard of God, the, the vineyard of empathy planted on a fruitful hill. The second one is when God's people breaks down the negative parts of the vineyard. And the third one is what believers ought to do when being empathized in God's holy vineyard. Amen? Amen. So the first key point is the vineyard of empathy planted on a, uh, on a fruitful hill. Isaiah chapter 5 from verse 1 to 4, and I will read. Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine, he built it, he built a tower in its midst, and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, Please, judge please, between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done to my vineyard that I may not done that I have not done in it? Why then and when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild Grapes. Praise God. Amen. Isaiah is speaking, and God is speaking through Isaiah about God's well beloved, which we all know as the Lord Jesus Christ, which he also is quoting in John 15 where we're going to look into in a little bit about this vineyard this vineyard of empathy planted on a fruitful hill and this fruitful hill is full of empathy but we see here that the enemy has stepped in and it's trying to mess up everything that that is in the 
vineyard, everything that has been created. And the last line in verse 2 says, it brought forth wild grapes. And uh, the, another word for wild is crazy, uh, insane, nzuzu. Amen? But in Hebrew, the word wild means stink. The ones that, that smell so bad. It started producing vines and fruits that are so bad that to the point it starts smelling. And it, and it, it did not look good for this vineyard. So we see here that Isaiah is asking these questions. What have I done to this vineyard in order to produce these unfruitful vines and unfruitful grapes that it starts to stink? But we understand here that it is a sign that Isaiah, God is telling Isaiah to show some empathy around this vineyard, around this peculiar vineyard in the land. Amen? Amen. So this is what we understand. God's well-beloved shows his vineyard, shows his empathy. God's well-beloved shows his empathy to us by seeing, hearing, and feeling our situations. Amen? Amen. And that's actually where the word empathy comes in, uh, which is the meaning to see, hear, and feel others' situation. And God is actually showing these things to Isaiah how to be empathetic to others and also how to be empathetic to him. Amen? Amen? And the second thing we learn from this is that God shows his empathy to those who fear him. Let's go to Psalm 103, verse 13. Psalm 103, Verse 13, uh, I want someone to read it. So. And the Father, he pities his children. Mm -hmm. So the Lord pities those who fear him. Praise God. Hallelujah. David also referenced. Isaiah, that as a father shows mercy and compassion and empathy to his children, that the same way the Lord shows the same to those who fear him. So the only way we receive empathy from God is that we fear him, knowing that he sees our situation, he hears our situation, and he feels our situation, even in this time that we are experiencing. Amen? Amen. The second key point, when God's people breaks down the negative parts of the vineyard, we'll go back to Isaiah chapter 5. And I want someone to read from verses 5 through 7. Yeah. 
they read it so well upon it. For the fire of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah is place of God. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, he cried. This is what the Lord of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Now Isaiah, again, is starting to act on his empathy to this vineyard that he is in. He's saying that I will take away hedges and it will be burnt. It will be, break, it will be broken down. All walls will be broken down trampled to the ground. And at the same time, that there will be no rain on these evil hedges around this empathetic vineyard. And verse 7, Isaiah declares justice to those who are oppressed. That with righteousness, that he will behold a cry for help. Amen? Amen? So, the word trample in Hebrew means to tread down, or to step, or to, to tear down strongholds. Amen? Amen. You know, like, like us, we, you know, we, we always like to, to step on, on certain things. Uh, like on, on, on like little insects that, that are so creepy to the point that we, we just step on them. Uh, my, my two sisters, every time they, they see a roach uh, around the house, uh, uh, she'll, she'll be like, oh, Chibuliam, Chibuliam, come and, and, and kill this roach. So either I step on the roach or I get a roach spray and just spray it and just give the roach some time to just scrumble, scrumble around until it dies. Or I just simply step on the roach if I'm wearing uh, some, some kind of uh, footwear. And this actually happened uh, last month. Uh, another thing happened last month because uh, I know I was like really asleep that that uh, that early morning uh, Chasm wanted to get to the restroom and the next thing you know at the crack of the door there was a just a tiny snake a tiny snake was just squirming around and she had to she had to close the door slam it so that the snake will die but it was it was still moving. So that was where uh, uh, my dad, uh, he had to come in and make sure that the snake is completely dead. Uh, but luckily, the snake did not harm any of us. Amen? So we have to trample down any satanic and demonic hedges to obtain the everlasting empathy of life. Amen? Amen? And that's the first thing we understand. By using empathy, we ought to tread and break down demonic hedges to obtain everlasting life. And the second thing we learn from this is that we ought to abide with Jesus, with the true vine, the true vine as Jesus Christ, as his own branches, that we will abide with him. We can find that in John chapter 15. John 15 from 1 to 4. Uh, someone can read that. Abide in the vine, no more can ye except, except ye abide in me. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. So Jesus describes himself as the true vine. And that we are the branches. And if we are a part of this true vine, we ought to abide in him. And there are those other branches that don't want to abide with God. That they'll be cut off. And that it will just wither and die. So we ought to abide with the true vine. And at the same time, be connected to this to this true vine and the vine, the vine dresser, who is our God. Amen? Amen. So why is our God so empathetic to lead us through his vineyard full of empathy? Again, even in this time that we are experiencing, when this pandemic is still out there, that, that is actually a sign that we ought to show some kind of empathy, even to those that have contracted this disease, those that have, that whether they have done us wrong or not, If they're going through one situation, you have to show some empathy, amen? amen? If they have contracted this disease, show some empathy, amen? amen. If they have cursed you, show some empathy. Amen. If they have gossiped about you, show some empathy. If they have placed every negativity in your life, Show some empathy. Because we don't want to be cut off from the vine dresser and the true vine. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. The third key point, what believers ought to do and know when being empathized in God's holy vineyard. Let's go to Philippians, the second reading. Philippians chapter 4. And I want someone to read uh, verses 4 to 7 and then skip to verse 13. Let your gentleness be known to all men, the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Yes. Verse 13. Uh, did you read verse 7? Yes. Oh, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. God your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Verse 13. 13 says, <clears throat> 13. Okay. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. In this verse, in this passage, Paul is talking to the church in Philippi about what they ought to do as believers and what they ought to know when being empathized in God's holy vineyard. And this is actually what we ought to, uh, what, what, what we ought to know and do as believers today. Amen. And Paul used the word anxious, which we see in verse 6. Anxious in Greek, meaning distress, worries. Amen? Amen. Other words like anguish. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there are three things here that 
we believers ought to do and know when being empathized in God's holy vineyard. The first thing is from verses 4 and 5. It says that we ought to rejoice in the Lord always and let our gentleness be known to others. Amen? Amen. With this crisis of pandemic that has been going on. And it's not just uh, the, pan the pandemic of COVID-19. The pandemic of racism. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You know, like uh, a white man hating on a black man. A white man hating on, on other people of color. That even though we are facing these difficult times, we ought to rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Amen. We ought to rejoice in God's presence. And that we ought to be uh, gentle and meek to others. Especially with uh, people of color. We ought to show the kind of gentleness that Jesus showed to his disciples and all the people that he healed. We have to show these empathy and gentleness when we are rejoicing in him. Amen? Amen. The second thing that we ought to do from verse 6 and 7 says we should never be anxious for anything but make all prayers known to God through his peace. Amen? Amen? We shouldn't be anxious and scared and stressed just because of the pandemic that is temporary, that will temporarily still be around, but eventually will come to an end. Amen? Amen. We shouldn't be anxious for anything, but we ought to keep praying and praying Knowing that our prayers will be known to God through his peace. Just like in the scene where Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and a big storm came. And Jesus looked at his disciples saying, don't you have faith? And looked at the, the storm and said, peace be still. And the, the, the storm and the hurricanes stopped. So we have to understand that we shouldn't be anxious for anything because we worship a God that heals. Amen? Amen. And through his peace, our prayers will be known. Hallelujah. Amen. The third thing, and this is actually uh, to know from verse 13, and we say this all the time, we know that with Christ's strength, we can do anything. Amen? Amen? I can do all things. We can do all things through the strength of Christ. Amen? Amen. As long as we have that strength, as long as we have the energy and the enthusiasm to serve him, we will know that we can do all things. We can boldly do everything. Even if it means we can do it on our own, we know that we can do it. Amen? Amen? So we have to understand that with this power of Christ in us and with his empathy shown to us, we can do it. We can do anything. We can, we can keep praying. We can keep pressing on until we reach that finish line in the name of Jesus. Amen. The prophet Isaiah as well as King David and the Lord Jesus Christ taught us that God shows his empathy by seeing, hearing, and feeling our situations as well as breaking 
demonic hedges around us when we abide with him in his fear. The Apostle Paul gave us facts on what, on what, on what we believers ought to do and know when being empathized in God's holy vineyard. Therefore, we have the knowledge to show empathy to make a difference in the society. Amen? Amen. And I mentioned earlier about the pandemic of racism in America that has been happening for over 400 years. So we have to understand that if we show empathy to those that have done us wrong, then our God will show empathy to us. Our God will be compassionate to us. Amen? Amen. I'm going to close with a quote by a known author named Daniel H. Pink. And he says, Empathy is about standing in someone else's shoes, feeling with his or her heart, seeing with his or her eyes. Not only is empathy hard to outscore and automate, but it makes the world a better place. Praise God. And the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, actually said something just like this. That if you have so much empathy, you are standing in somebody's shoes, feeling the pain and seeing the kind of issue in their eyes. And not only that is hard, but it will always make this world and our spirituality better. Amen? Amen? So I encourage everyone who is here and those that are watching online to show some empathy in this vineyard that we are passing through. Because it is a vineyard that God has planted for our lives. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you all glory and honor for your empathy that has been shown to us. And we are praying that you use us to show empathy to those who have done us wrong and those who have been through one issue or the other, that at the end you will show your empathy to us. And we pray that you will take absolute control as we continue the rest of the service. We ask, oh God, that the power of empathy will be in our hearts, oh God. Thank you for those who are here and those who are at home watching. We ask, O oh God, that your word will be extended to them, O oh God. We thank you and we give you all glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.